Oh, the time draws near. The fantasy playoffs are here. And you know what that means? That means that some people are going to be fantasy champs. Hashtag Foot Clan Titles. You're talking about me? Going to be maybe He's talking about maybe me, Jason, Andy. maybe right. me. But you know who's going to be winning? The people listening to this show, bringing home the hashtag Foot Clan Championship. And when you win, you got to swag out. You house it. You let everyone else know that they suck and you are the king. <laughs> Where the do we queen. do that? Where do we do it, Mike? Fantasychamps.com. All the best gear, the belts, the rings, the trophies, everything you need to gloat and let everyone else know how terrible they are. Fantasychamps.com. Use the code BALLERS and you're going to save a little bit of quiche. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. You were talking about all that swag, Mike. I... Figured it was Brooks related. You know how Brooks is. Oh, just dripping. Just dripping. I don't think Fantasy Champs is selling the grill yet. You know, I, th- I think that, they might you have might a grill. Be, yeah, Do they all? Yeah. So you're right, Brooks. Is. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh, that covers six teeth, Champs? Is that what you A champ? Five teeth? <laughs> oh, are you going, trying to count the letters? I just figure there's a letter on every tooth. I don't know. <laughs> But Brooks is swagging out, that's for sure. Uh, I'm just so thankful that you had such a jovial spirit during that opener, Mike, because things are... Look, I put on a brave face for everyone. Oh, we're going right into it. I don't know. (laughs) How's Antonio? My champion has fallen. Oh, no. (laughs) He is not immune. I thought, I thought you were stronger than this, Antonio. And it was a toe that took him out. Yeah, a that's... A mere toe. A mere small morsel of your body. The worst thing about a toe injury is it sounds weak. It sounds pathetic. Until you have had oh, yeah. a toe injury and you go, Oh, how am I supposed to possibly run with this big toe injury? I can't walk, <laughs> let alone run. It's like the Achilles heel. Now, if it was a baby toe injury, then we then it's something else. Sure. You yeah. don't need that guy. You can just pop him off and, and just go on with your day. Yeah, you just replace him with a peanut a little bit later. Yeah, that's right. But, yeah, they, we're, again, we're right into it. Welcome to the Fantasy yes, Footballers sorry. Podcast. No, you're, you're fine. You did the right thing. This is what people are here to listen about. Yeah, we couldn't get to show 1,000 <laughs> without some pain for Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Oh. Uh, but show- Hey, at least it wasn't on show 1,000. I didn't need to be walking into that celebration with this dark cloud over my head well and i know i know for a fact there were people out there with like the gore gibson stack this week at, at running back and you um you know you have a, you're having a dark day or the clyde edwards Alaire. oh yeah uh, yeah gibson uh yeah stack yeah. mike <laughs> or maybe the trifecta gore clyde edwards Alaire gibson oh my goodness it's, uh, it's, it's, fantasy, this is fantasy is a it's a cruel beast well and and the reason it is is because you cannot see what happened last night happening? You know, Washington defeated the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. I believe that they were the stat thrown out on the broadcast 78-0-1 or something when they had a two-touchdown lead at home. I, I saw it was the second largest blown lead and at it, home. And it just doesn't, even thinking about it, it doesn't really compute, right? Because Steelers with a lead at home, how do you possibly give up Enough points well, you, to a Washington offense without Antonio Gibson. Yeah, you you give up enough points to Pat Mahomes and the right. Chiefs. When uh, I so the game was early and we had it on in the studio. I I went home right before the half and I said to Brooks as I as I left, I was like, I don't see how Washington scores. Like I don't get how they're going to score. And that was how it felt uh, right up until that field goal right before the half. Before and the uh, the the little sneaky yeah. sneak by Alex Smith. Yes, very smart. But Washington now uh, atop the division, five and seven. 
I mean, you have well, it's high. the Giants are still at the top because of the tiebreaker. It's been very fun to talk about the NFC best and the NFC least. Mm -hmm. But you got to give credit to Washington and yes. New York who defeated Seattle and Pittsburgh this yes, week. Yes, big wins. And those type of unexpected games are exactly what happens in fantasy. Sometimes, I mean, the takeaways from this game for me, beyond the Gibson injury, which could last into next week and beyond, it's unfortunate. Oh, you, uh, this That is uh, not a doctor, but uh, all the, the doctors that I trust, I mean, I, I immediately hit up our guy, Matthew Betts. Is who, he a toe doctor? Well, he's a, he's a physical therapist, okay, right. and I said – Look, man, you tell me he's going to be okay, and he just responded basically with a gif of crying because – and I said, lie to my face. Yes, lie Betts, to me. Lie to me. <laughs> and he couldn't. And then uh, pro football doc also was like, that's a toe Like problem. turf toe. Yeah, he's like, that. that is not good. If 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 that is, in fact, a turf toe injury – That could be la the I last mean, you see of Gibson. It could be. It, it, but certainly, certainly week 14 – you will not have Antonio Gibson, and almost even worse, if some miracle happens and Gibson suits up, oh yeah, he is not going to be effective. Yeah, that sucks. You know what else sucks? The What's entire that? running back room for Pittsburgh. Starting running backs for the Pittsburgh Steelers are named Juju Smith-Schuster and Deontay Johnson. Yeah, because that's not fair. Chase Claypool can be a good running yeah. back. That's true. That's true. But uh, it's it's the passing game. It's the 53 pass attempts Ben Roethlisberger offense. Benny Smells Jr., mm. eight carries, five yards, point six, and then stuffed, what, three out of four carries on the goal line. Anthony McFarlane barely got any work. I uh, guess it, this means when James Conner comes back, you are you are in good you, shape. Yeah, that, that was one of my takeaways watching this was like, man, they really need James Conner. And so when he's back, I think he's you know going to be right back at the same heavy yep. utilization role. And then this was a career game for Logan Thomas, 9 for 98 and a touchdown on nine targets. J.D. McKissick was the – they didn't defend J.D. McKissick. It's it was back, a, man. It, Smooch his time again. It was uh, go ahead, go ahead, Al. <laughs> I know you've got that. Waiting, to, everybody, prepare yourself. <laughs> See, we didn't adjust the volume it at all. It comes in too hard. Like it's the too cut, hot. It's too hot. The cut comes in hot. Well, we'll do some work. Probably not. That'll probably be how it stays. Do we? Did we put J.D. McKissick on the waivers? No oh. question. No question. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know Peyton uh, Barber did have 14 carries and a touchdown. He only ran for 23 yards, but it's Pittsburgh, so. If, right. you get, if you give Peyton Barber 15 carries next week, you could it, probably do worse out there. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's Pitts, Pittsburgh, and Antonio Gibson ripped off a 13-yard run right at the beginning of the no, game. Mike, Mike, you just need to move on. We need to move on. It, it was pretty funny. You'll too. move on. You're defending the fact that the toe hurts a lot. You're defending a 13-yard run. It, it was funny to me. that So Mike and I were playing each other. I oh. had Benny Snell. He had Gibson, and I barely outscored Gibson with an entire game of work versus his one 13-yard carry. All right, more impressive and a big discussion point for this show, very, very relevant for next week, Josh Allen, 32 for 40, 375 oh, and man. four. Oh, man. Dissected and disintegrated the 49ers secondary. Extremely impressive performance. Cole Beasley, Stephon Diggs combined for 19 receptions, over 200 yards. Uh, Gabriel Davis made his mark in this game. Four touchdown passes, and I was saying this coming in. There is a a real dilemma for fantasy players next week with yes, Josh Allen. there is. Because to this point, we've been looking. I know Jason and myself, we both made accommodations for the ability to put Josh Allen on your bench against Pittsburgh next week. But I don't know if you should do that anymore. Maybe you should, but... Pittsburgh's defense is is suffering from the injury bug. You had – I don't know if Joe Hayden's back next week. He suffered uh, what looked like a concussion. You lost now Devin Bush and Bud Dupree this year. You lost a backup linebacker last night. You lost Minka Fitzpatrick for a play or two. And Josh Allen, that performance, Jason, you were mad. He's your quarterback. <laughs> you were mad he played that well. Am I right? I How was, dare you? I was legitimately upset watching him. Oh, excellent. Just be excellent all over the field. He he was so amazing. I was like, no, no. 
Because now, coming into next week, I've got a decision. It was easy. You didn't want the dilemma. I wanted him to go out and stink against a good 49ers defense. That way, next week, because this week I wasn't really playing for anything, next week I'm putting Tom Brady in over him because he's playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. But now it's like, he was so good. And the Steelers lost so many people on defense. Uh, it, it will be a debate. I'm going to have to do some digging on the last five weeks and see if Pittsburgh has waned at all. Um, as far as their past defense, uh, but it'll be a decision to be made instead of one that was already <laughs> a foregone conclusion. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild. How about it, on the other side of the ball, Raheem sure. Mostert? That is mm. one of the big takeaways for me: the fear of his utilization because he was excellent when he touched the ball. He looked great, made some great cuts, had the speed that no one else on the field has, and for some reason, they they you know. It felt like it was all Jeff Wilson. That's how it felt. Now, Raheem Mostert did lead in carries. Uh, I, I would be blown away if he was where Jeff Wilson was in snaps. I don't have that data in front of me. Um, but are you afraid to play Raheem Mostert next week? Not really. Not really. I, he, You know, he had a couple of goal line carries, didn't get in the end zone. I think if you're 9 for 42 and a touchdown, you're probably taking solace in this game where – Nick Mullins had to throw the ball 39 times. They were behind. I'm probably okay with most of What I liked in terms of evaluating that situation was what you said. He led the team in carries. Tevin Coleman had two carries in this game for negative 11 yards, which is impossible. I could do I could do that. I could do that. You could legitimately do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Jeff Wilson, 7 for 47. They did use him around the goal line as well, and he he got stuffed. What if I remind you that they are playing Washington? Well, I'm, I'm certainly not confident, <laughs> but I, I understand. I mean, it's going to come down That's to your, it's your decision, up. right? It's yep. your, it's your other options on your, on your roster. And we'll have plenty of time this week to break down Raheem Mostert, or I will say that of all the running backs in San Francisco, I'd play Mostert. I agree with that. He, he's the most explosive, uh, by a wide margin. Jeff Wilson looked good, but Raheem Mostert. He looked on a couple of those plays like he was just one tackle away from his signature 80-yard house call. Yeah, and that's – it's not like Mostert was dominating in volume to start the year. Right. It, it, wasn't it, was, a, it was still higher, though. Right, but his, his fantasy days were made on big plays and touchdowns. Yeah, it just yeah, like his running back usage, I mean, he – week one, the 65% of the, the carries, uh, weeks five and six, right around that 50 – Five percent mark. 55! Thank you, me. Elegant. Thank you. Uh, but that that has dropped to under fifty percent the last two weeks. Yeah, it came back from injury. Like I said, game script last night was tough. The, you you know what San Francisco wants to do, and it's not to put the the ball in the hands of Nick Mullins. I don't think next week against Washington they're going to be playing catch up throughout the game. If Gibson's out, You're this play is mustard. Be, right, no catch up. You play mustard. Sorry. Thank you, yeah. Colonel. <laughs> Uh, Debo and Ayuk both heavily involved. Oh. Ayuk was five for ninety-five. Debo was six for seventy-three. Uh, Ayuk had the touchdown last night. Both nine targets. So it's uh, I think both are viable. They're they're viable, and it was it was wild that it took them so long to get Debo involved last night. I mean, you look at that really stat. garbage time. Yeah, it was six for seventy-three. Uh, it was and it was in the second half of the game. Like let's let's get the man the ball. Yeah, both of those guys are going to be on the field the entire game. They're going for to that be – I, I, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but I'm just I'm thinking out loud here. Next year, man, when you have Ayuk in his second year, Debo, George Kittle back on the field, this is going to be an interesting offense. Jimmy Hansel? Yeah, M maybe. Sorry, Carson Wentz. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Tuesday night football.com this evening. We also have a Thursday night game. So we just do, we just don't take breaks anymore. Every day mm -hmm. is football. Lamar Jackson activated will play tonight. Curtis Samuel's been placed on the reserve COVID list as a close contact to the confirmed positive yeah. DJ Moore. Uh, we do not expect DJ Moore back out on the field then next week. And then we'll hopefully get Samuel back as a close contact. Yes, yeah, so the the timeline of it, he should be able to come back, assuming he keeps testing negative. 
Uh, Christian McCaffrey is is supposed to return in Week 14 against the Broncos. Jason, are you interested in his return? <laughs> I am super interested in his return. While I debate whether Raheem Mostert against Washington or James Conner against Buffalo uh, runs next to him, I will I will not be debating whether or not Christian McCaffrey is my lead guy. And uh, just so that the Foot Clan at home can follow along, because I know many of you like to do that. It appears Jason and Mike will be playing each other in the first round, not Jason and myself. All right. And so, uh, you know, Mike is not feeling great about his team right now. No. Due no. To some They're injuries. crumbling. <laughs> they are, every time you've said my team is crumbling, another player has gone down. Yeah. DJ Moore, Gibson. Yep. Miles. Yep. Yeah. Feel, feel yeah no, no, everything's fine. How, how are you feeling? Everything about is fine. Mike's team, Jason. I I thought I was not playing Mike, so I I thought I was playing Daniel. Um, so I, I'm I'm really excited to play Mike if that's the case. Oh, yeah. Now we'll find out. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll keep you up to date. I might be wrong on that. Uh, not. This is bad news. John Gruden not confident that Josh Jacobs will return for Week 14. Mm. That stinks. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 does. He's a guy that helped get people to the playoffs, and you won't have him available. Yeah, there's quite a few of those right now. And then uh, Saints head coach Sean Payton did not provide a time frame for Drew Brees. There was some optimism about him playing in Week 14. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, Sean Payton wouldn't say whether it's Jameis Winston or, you know, he's keeping this close to the vest no matter what. Adam Schefter did report that he could return in Week 14, so it's at least worth monitoring. If you've got a quarterback problem, you might consider, and this is the waiver wire show. When you're looking at your streaming matchup, Breeze could be out on waivers, and you could take the shot that he would be active. I don't know why, but when you said if you have a quarterback problem, pay attention to waivers. For some reason, I thought Matt Nagy might have perked up and been like, "Wait, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. huh? What do you got? Uh, okay, any other news we need to talk about, Brooks? Is there anything I missed? No, sir. All right. Excited about your Cowboys tonight? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Oh come on! The NFC East uh, is really showing up this week. I'm, I'm sure it'll continue. <laughs> well, here's something you can follow along with. I want to thank uh, Head and Shoulders sponsoring today's show. Uh, Head and Shoulders available at Walmart. We've done this segment, the up to 100 players each and every week, and normally we get to just reflect on them on our Tuesday episode. We don't even get to do that because one's playing tonight. TuesdayNightFootball.com. That's right. And so uh, pay attention. J.K. Dobbins was Mike's big taking it up to 100 player this evening and, and hopefully you held on to last week's take it up to oh, 100 man. player who oh, Beasley. turned into the number one wide receiver for the buffalo bills last night yeah what's 100 times 100 Just, <laughs> I, I don't know that you got to take all the zeros and got to add them up it's, it's got to be at least 50 did million get, dollars did you see cole beasley get rocked like a little bitty baby after his tut, after he, uh, yeah. After oh, he is that scored, what they did? Yeah, one of the linemen picked him up. Oh my! <laughs> they rocked him like a little bitty baby. It was awesome. Yeah, he took it up to 100. But J.K. Dobbins tonight. Make sure you pay attention to that and take your hair up to 100 with Head and Shoulders available at Walmart. Pickers up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our new up to 100 peaks. Uh, picks. <laughs> well, I mean, they're taking it up to 100. They're going to the peak. Well, I, I, I was sitting here thinking, like, there are no weeks of football. It just all blends together now. We play every day of the week. We play on the yep. weekends. Hey, we always get Friday off. Yeah. So far, no Friday football. But you know, I saw somebody on Twitter, like, doing the pretend conversation with the wife. Like, look, I don't watch football except for Saturday night, Sunday morning, Monday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night. But otherwise, you got me every night of the week. Right. And now Wednesday. Right, Wednesday night. Yeah. Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon, football.com. Also, we want to thank Chrysler Pacifica. Look, Foot Clan, if you're out there and you want a great family vehicle, or maybe you're the party house, maybe you're the ones that uh, – everyone's coming over to your place. Everyone is is carpooling together. You want to seat up to eight people. That's why we've got a, a minivan. Is it, Your whole just, fantasy team can get inside of that. the most practical well, vehicle that exists. Mine can now as it continues to crumble away. There are fewer, Handicap fewer, accessible. 
Yeah, but <laughs> oh. I'm telling you, these vans are awesome, and they're not just you know they're not 1990s old busted minivans. These are awesome. You're talking about really nice looking vans, leather seats. You've got stow and go maximum storage seating that goes down low. You've got the the TV screens, and also Chrysler Pacifica. It's America's only hybrid minivan. Uh, you can go 32 miles all electric, 520 miles in total. That means your daily commute. You could do it without using How a single miles drop total? of gas. 520 miles wow. total, 32 miles all electric. Tax season is right around the corner, so you'll want to take advantage of the $7,500 federal tax credit before the end of the year with a purchase of a new Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. On top of that, Fantasy Footballers listeners can enjoy a $1,000 bonus cash offer. You just go to PacificaFootballers.com. And not only that, you're going to get the Chrysler's employee price with Pacifica Family Pricing. That's a savings of over $9,000 plus up to $7,500 federal tax credit. Just go to PacificaFootballers.com. Put me in, coach. All right, waiver time. Kind of a, it takes a different shape. For the fantasy playoffs and for the teams that are in there, right? Because there's, yep. we're here. Yeah, we're here. There's no, there's, there's no more looking to the future. No, this is one week waiver wire wonder time. And the the problem too is, you kind of want to dance with the team you brought, right? You 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 have a sense of. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> or you're in Mike's situation and there are injuries all over the place, tough matchups, and we need to walk through each position and some options out there on the waiver wire. Why? Because you could end up with the wide receiver one on the week. That's what last week's situation was. Mike started the week with Corey Davis. He was available in a lot of leagues. He's still available in like 45% of ESPN leagues right now. So he will be a, a highly competitive ad. But you have the opportunity to, um, to roll out some players that have monster weeks. The uh, another somehow now Al Borland did not make our league of record playoffs, and I want to stress that. Well, because his team is hot garbage. Right, right. The hot garbage team. However, this is the credit I'm going to give you, Al. Uh, after the insult, of course. Of course, you went out and you put up the the biggest week of any team in our league this past week. You had the three best wide receivers in football, which happened to be Devontae Adams. Okay, all right, that makes sense. And then Corey Davis and Cole Beasley. And so... Uh, and Tim two, Patrick didn't do too bad on the bench either. <laughs> Just couldn't fit in behind right. all these superstars. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. So there, there's opportunity out there. So who are your favorite wide receivers you're looking at right now? Corey Davis is in the probably roster category. Yeah, he's he's probably on most rosters out there. Like like you said, ESPN, he's avail more available than in, than in Yahoo. I mean, the, looking at the top pickups, I would say uh, I don't I don't have them ranked off the top of my head here, but Kiki QT, the that was quite a breakout game for him. The, the first time we'd seen the Houston Texans without Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks and company, it turned into Kiki QT getting nine targets. Eight for 141 yards, and he was being utilized down the field. There wasn't just it wasn't just the check it down to the slot wide receiver. It was well, let's get Kiki wide open. Uh, then you had T. Y. Hilton, the Houston Texans destroyer. I mean, he he is on He's, more than half of waiver wires. Yeah, he is the the two names that stick out to me. And Kiki Q T should absolutely be looked at because of targets, because of quarterback. But the matchup is is tough uh, against Chicago this week. Um, so maybe that pushes you to two other guys that I prefer, which is T.Y. Hilton. After his phenomenal game where he showed he is still capable, I mean, I know it's not going to be against Houston, and T.Y. Houston is very good. Mm -hmm. um, and it's his second consecutive good game. Right, but uh, against the Las Vegas Raiders, that's another plus matchup. And then you do get the advantage of T.Y. Houston again the following week sure. uh, against Houston. The other player that I like is Alan Lazard. Let me see if I could talk you guys into why I think he I'm is in. worth <laughs> – You, I need a lot of guys. I'm in. Uh, name some more. Um, but the reality is Aaron Rodgers is playing phenomenal football. It, you know, if he throws four touchdowns this week uh, against Detroit, nobody's going to be surprised. Don't be like, why not five? 
Why not? Yeah, exactly. That will be the surprise. Why only four? Um, and then you've got Carolina and Tennessee. So you've got three back-to-back -back good matchups, a phenomenal quarterback, and Alan Lazard has looked pretty good. He, he didn't have a good, uh, great game this last week. You know, three for 50 is mediocre. Mm -hmm. It didn't crush you with 50 yards, but it's certainly nothing special. But he played 69% of the snaps. He's been good. Mark Marquez Valdez-Scantling still can't catch the ball. Um, so I, I just like putting my – if I'm taking a shot on a waiver wire pickup and play, I want touchdowns. And I don't see anybody out there with as high a touchdown probability to me as the one playing with Aaron Rodgers. No, it makes sense, and, and you like the schedule moving forward. The, the Hilton thing is tough. Yeah. Because everything you said is 100% right. I look at that, and I look at Houston on the schedule, and you, I say the history of T.Y. Hilton – now I know I'm looking at T.Y. Hilton differently than if Zach Pascal had these the the week he had last week, mm -hmm. and would I be chasing it into my fantasy playoffs? I'm not sure I would. That being said, it's Las Vegas. It's a really really solid matchup, and there is something to be said about trusting that over the likes of Kiki QT after one good game going against Chicago. So, you know, Michael Pittman. I mean, he's in the same he's conversation out there too. as T.Y. Hilton. He, Hilton was the one who had the big game, but Pittman still had five targets, five receptions for 46 yards. I mean, he's he's on the field. He, he was on the field more than T.Y. Hilton this past week. Also, uh, Jonathan Abram might not play this week against for the, the Colts, Raiders. The Raiders' safety, who's phenomenal. Um, he might not play, so T.Y. Hilton... And Michael Pittman are are absolutely in play. Yeah, I like the loving targets, and I like that Rivers looked his way. Rivers is somebody that I think is sneaky this week as well. So I I like Hilton. I imagine if Corey now you put Corey Davis ahead of him if he's available, right? Sure. And uh, you would you put Cole Beasley ahead with how on fire Beasley is, or do you not because of the Pittsburgh matchup? I uh, I would. Okay. Uh, I, John Brown is still going to be out because he was put on IR. Cole Beasley is. When John Brown's off the field, Cole Beasley is just – he's great. Yeah, if you're in a PPR league especially, sure. Cole Beasley is e – even in a tough matchup, he's just going to be peppered uh, with enough targets. I think those are the those are the biggest names. Now, you go deeper, you look at players like Tim Patrick, who, who just got brought up, who's been outstanding. He's the wide receiver one on that team. Oh, for sure he's the wide receiver one. He's shown a great rapport, uh, the, the, at least the best that you can have with Drew Locke. Um, and if again we we brought this up, top thirty six wide receiver in the last five weeks, with the sole exception of when their team did not was not allowed to have a quarterback on the roster. Do you think Tim Patrick is safer than T. Y. Hilton? No, mm. I think they're both about the same. Um, just because Drew Locke, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't look at Drew Locke as safe. Okay. Yeah. No. No one does. No. He is not safe. And then the the. Uh, Deeper as well, because this is not going to feel good in your fantasy playoff week. But the guys from the New York Jets, they are playing the Seattle Seahawks. That has been it's continued to be a plus matchup for wide receivers. Now, Jamison Crowder was the one who came away with the, the, the big game because he had two, two touchdowns on his five receptions. So, I mean, Crowder is in play, but... As as deeper shots, Brashad Perryman and then Denzel Mims is also you you I think you could take the shot on getting the one big play against the Seahawks secondary. For a second there I remembered a Mims touchdown, but I think it was a two point conversion, wasn't it? Yes. Last week. Yeah, okay. Yeah, those are those are more in the um scary category. Uh, certainly. But interesting, nonetheless. And uh anybody else at the wide receiver position that you really wanna Dial up. I want to keep it simple today. Yeah, I to agree. a degree with the playoff matchups, you probably have players you're comfortable with. But if not, these are the names that we're looking at, uh, especially Hilton, because there is the possibility that maybe Hilton's just feeling better and and starting it's to be because this was not eighty one and a touchdown yeah, two weeks ago. Exactly, it was eighty one and a touchdown, which was his high water mark, and then he he usurped it. T. Y. Houston. LV Hilton is pretty good too. So, <laughs> oh, all right, you know okay. what I mean. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's all he needs. He just needs to be able to put his name with the team he's Somewhere, playing, and yeah. fantasy relevance will come. <laughs> all right, L so, LV Hilton. So dumb. All right, running back situations uh, to look at. 
Drop candidates people are bringing up from Twitter. Miles Sanders, Brooks, that name's actually coming up. Is that, is that the vitriol that we have? More than a few of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure people are asking. The answer is a resounding no. No, you don't drop Miles Sanders. No. Correct. What about Chase Edmonds? Uh, at, at this point of the playoffs, no. I would not be dropping him because if, if Kenyon Drake misses time, yeah. then, then Chase Edmonds is locked. Like, we're gonna talk. We're gonna try and highlight people you could pick up and play this week. But this is the time. These insurance running backs need to be here's, rostered. Here's a name I would legitimately feel totally fine dropping, though. Todd Gurley. That's fine. Todd Gurley is. They came out publicly. They said he's dealing with a knee injury. Uh, his snap count was severely reduced. I think he was the third down back for parts of this game. I feel like we talk about leaving a. Uh, a landmine on the waiver wire for the fantasy playoffs. Right. I would love nothing more than to face Todd Gurley in my fantasy playoffs. His upside with an injury and how touchdown dependent he was and how bad he looked before the injury tells me that I'm fine dropping him if I, and moving on to somebody else. Yeah. Do you guys agree with that? No, I, I agree. It's one of those things where can you, can you tell me how you're going to start him? Right. That so how you're gonna start Chase Edmonds. Well, Drake goes down, he's gonna be absolutely someone in the lineup. How are you gonna start Todd Gurley? I mean, the only way you're gonna start Todd Gurley right now is a desperation I don't have anybody left and I'm gonna lose this week anyways. So let's go digging on the waiver wire, see if we can't find someone with a higher upside. All right, and so let's move into some options. Devontae Booker looks like he's going to get another start. Now wasn't really impressive. It's it but was Devontae, nor will it be this week. Exactly, it was Devonte Booger last week, and <laughs> it's going to be Devonte Booger this week because the Indianapolis matchup. Their defense is too good. When when the news came out this morning about Josh Jacobs missing this game, I posted the update to our Slack channel, and Brooks quickly replied, "It's another. What did you say? Like Booger returns? Booger round two? Booger round two?" I was 100% terrified they hired Booger McFarland to be in the Monday Night Football booth, oh. the booth again. I've I've changed. I want him back. I I miss Booger. So you'd yeah, because you want it to be more exciting. Yeah, it's yeah, too vanilla. Yeah, the, the the crew like they're very professional. Yeah, I get it. They they do a a, a fine job, but now it's like we didn't know how good we had it. With, oh with no, all the, bo- all the Boogerisms. This is still better than it was. But you d- you I tweeted more before. I when want, Booger was yeah, in the, that's I enjoyed it more. You can you call would, Booger would, the sprinkles, okay? So, you know, this yes, is like, okay. right now we've got the vanilla ice cream, and we just need some sprinkles on it. It's it's fine. Nobody doesn't like vanilla ice cream. It's it's ice cream. What if we just put him down on the field in the Booger Mobile, but he never actually got, got to be we featured? Do some, we do some cut shots to him, yeah. and he's just riding it back and yeah. forth? Yeah. He never he doesn't get to talk. No like analysis. <laughs> just like, Booger, go right around. Yeah, I mean, that works for me. That would get him out of the halftime show. So, uh, all right, Devontae Booker is, at this point, if you're subbing in for somebody like Antonio Gibson, uh, you are just looking for a shot at volume. You're you're looking for somebody that can contribute to your team in some way that almost doesn't submarine it as much as puts you over the top. Booker is not going to goose. I mean, if he's if he's in the backfield. I, I feel like, you know, the guy, the, 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 the number one waiver pickup this week to me is you're rolling the dice. It's a little bit uh, dangerous, but Cam Akers, I mean... Cam Akers missed... He was DNP. Cam Akers is potentially hurt, so... He didn't practice? I believe that they said he would have been a DNP in practice. It's a Tuesday. I realize that. I'm fine with that. If he doesn't practice on Thursday, I'll be scared, but, I mean, he had 63% of the snaps. He had 21 carries. Uh, Are this they the Thursday I'll, game? I'll, I'll vet the the injury report real quick. I just noticed it came across my uh, came across my desk, as they say. Mm. Right. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're the Thursday game, the Rams versus the Patriots. So that uh, that doesn't change how I feel about Cam Akers. Sure. Um, it, it, they basically just said he wouldn't have participated if they had practiced. They weren't practicing. Yeah. But they said due to injury. This was a report from uh, uh, Lindsay uh, Thyre. So DNP for her uh, for Akers. It's just something to be aware of. Sure. And if you're going to spend up on him, I doubt he's out there. I mean, do you think he's going to be available for pickup after last week's, the I last mean, few weeks? You, the roster percentage uh, rostered 36% on ESPN, 53% on Yahoo. So almost half of Yahoo leagues. Okay. 
I, I take I, I take the caution back if you need to take your shot. He is a better play than Booker if he gets the start. He's looked great. He's looked great with that role. I just worry about the if he is injured, Daryl Henderson taking over Malcolm it, yeah. Brown stealing carries. It is sketchy. I'd rather pl- pick up McKissick if yeah. it were me. M- M- McKissick feels safer. McKissick's volume in the passing game is secure. If you're in a PPR league, it's just point, point, point every time that they dump the ball off to him. So I, I do like McKissick as well. I think that the ceiling is probably higher for Cam Akers, but he's very Agreed. risky. Um what do you do with the Detroit Lions? It's a shoulder injury for Cam Akers, for the record. Okay. So. Yeah, you're you're right. We need to pay attention to it. Um, but without any more information right now, based on what happened this last week, uh, things are looking. The arrows pointing up for Cam Akers. And Andy, you you agree? He's he's exceptionally talented. He was your favorite running back uh, in the pre-draft process, wasn't he? He it, was up there. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had rookies. a horrible. Florida State offensive line that kind of hit his talent. By the way, Sean McVay will be available late tonight to give a report on that. So, you know, it's going to be before you pick up your waivers. So keep that in mind. We'll put some stuff out on Twitter, Brooks, as soon as we hear an update. What do you do with the Detroit Lions? They've got a juicy matchup against the Green Bay Packers. You have four touchdowns in two games from Adrian Peterson, but you this has come while DeAndre Swift is it's out. Peter, it's Peterson. Yeah, I, I feel like it is too. Like, is, I mean, we don't know what's going on with DeAndre Swift. Uh, he had the concussion. He cleared the protocol. Then Adrian Peterson was talking about he's just not the same. But he was dealing with illness. He was sick. So we don't know what, you know, to sift through that and see, is this a continuation of that concussion of the head injury? Was it just an illness and he's going to be back at practice practicing in full, in which case I would say it's Swift. Yeah, I would. If Swift was healthy, I, I thought you were asking if, if – Swift misses again. It's definitely Adrian Peterson. Thirty-one oh, carries over yes. two weeks. Um, I I anticipate Swift will be back. Yeah, that makes this more difficult. The one situation, another one, because all of these seem to have some injury dependencies. Ty Johnson for yeah. the Jets is another one where he had twenty-two carries last week. You know, you know that Adam Gaze will force the ball to his running backs. Yeah, it wasn't just four, uh, 22 carries for Ty Johnson. It was another fourteen or something for Josh Adams. If Gore misses due to concussion. Ty Johnson will get a bunch of work in this game. Seattle coming up, 22 for 1 of 4 and 1 last week. Uh, I mean, I believe he destroyed people in fantasy playoffs last year in this exact same situation where people picked him up to play him in, the, I think, week one of the playoffs for Detroit. Yeah, and the nice thing is and that's, he failed. <laughs> that's a name that is 100% widely available. I, mm -hmm. he, you know, There might be a league or two he's rostered in outside of that. He's he's out there available. So you basically have Cam Akers monitor the shoulder, Adrian Peterson monitor uh, DeAndre Swift, Ty Johnson monitor Frank Gore's health, and then you know to be honest, Edo Smith split the work with Todd Gurley. If Gurley were to miss, then Edo Smith becomes a viable uh, dart throw at the running back position. You are looking. Can you can you buy ten carries? Can you buy fifteen carries at running back if you're in your playoffs and you have a major injury? Right. Yeah. That, I'm. So just to circle it back, J.D. McKissick, I <laughs> agree. I'm, yeah, just, I'm, I'm agreeing I know. that if J.D. McKissick were there. What he'd... about Peyton Barber? Because Peyton Barber had 14 carries. It was against Pittsburgh. Yeah, and they're playing San Francisco this week. So that's – Peyton Barber will see some opportunity. If they happen to get down by the goal line, it will probably be Peyton Barber. It's not – for sure, because uh, as watching my beloved champion Antonio Gibson get vultured by J.D. McKissick on the goal line, that can happen as well. I, is so this, Barber's Barber's not he's not super safe. Well, none of what I've learned by going through this running back situation is that I don't want to be looking for a running back in week one of my fantasy playoffs. But that's why we're here. I know, I know. I'm just saying it. It all makes me a little bit nauseous. Yes. And the truth is, is if you have the room, what I would be doing, if I'm desperate for running back, I'm taking a shot on a few of these and letting things, because mm -hmm. you're going to have to pick them up in the morning. So let things sort themselves out over the course of the week. If you need to drop a couple more, pick up another player, I'd be trying to sign like three of these guys and, and seeing who my best option is by the time uh, these games kick off. Yeah. I mean, but I'm worried about the shoulder injury on a Thursday night game for Cam Akers. I really am. Yeah, that's something that, that has to be monitored, and and obviously you have to have the players to drop. So Todd Gurley being the barometer, 
Would you top? Would you drop Todd Gurley for all of these guys, or just a few of them? Because you might have to start someone. I drop him for McKissick. Yes, I drop him for the chance at Ty Johnson having a big role. I think I don't. I don't know if Swift gets back out there, but that's where the line is. Is right at that Peterson line. Gurley could fall into the end zone. Would you drop Gurley for Peyton Barber? No. I don't think Peyton I, Barber against San Francisco. He, he might get 12, 13, 14 carries, but I don't think he's going to do anything with them, and you've got to get the touchdown. San Francisco is still a, a good defense, despite what Buffalo did, and Buffalo did most of that with Josh Allen, not in the running game. So I think I'm dropping Gurley. I'm, I'm going to try to piece together somebody other than Gurley. I mean, his last two games played, he's outside the top 45. He's dealing with an, a knee injury that they've disclosed as a problem. And when I watched him play, he looked awful. Yeah, before they told us about the knee injury, we knew that his arthritic knee was bothering him. Yeah, with our because of our eyeballs. Yes, it's a tough situation there. Uh, and Jamal Williams. Yeah, Jamal Williams is is fine. He the way that the Packers have been using Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams is they've basically been giving a, a drive to each. You know, the, the first drive of the game will be Aaron Jones. The second drive of the game will be Jamal Williams. They kind of do that for a, a lot of the game. And so it gives them enough opportunity. There's a plus matchup. He's not as talented. He's not. He doesn't have the breakaway home run potential. But he gets enough volume where he's, uh, you know, in flex consideration. All right, let's see whether we're chasing points at tight end on the waiver wire this week. The big one, I think, was the performance by Logan Thomas. Nine for 98 and a touchdown. Logan Thomas has been on the fantasy radar at the tight end position for uh, what week are we going into? We're going into 14. Okay, for 14 weeks, he's been on the fantasy radar at the at the tight end position. Yeah, and he's actually been better than people realize. And, and I know that the, the bar for a top 10 tight end is not necessarily that great. I would still rather my tight end be in the top 10, but in the last... Uh, the seven games here, he has been inside the top 10 five times. He's on the field essentially 100% of the time over the last five weeks. If you take it back to what Mike said from week six on, he's on pace for 66 receptions, 730 yards, and nine touchdowns. Yeah, that, that's phenomenal. I would, I would take that. So Logan Thomas, at this point in time, if you're playing tight end roulette, I'd rather have Logan Thomas and Jordan Reed. Yeah, I, yeah I, I agree. I brought that up last week. I'm just, I just don't have the confidence in Reed with Mullins and the snap counts and yeah, no, it we, Ayuk and Debo. Yeah, and, we didn't know what it would look like to have Brandon Ayuk and Debo, uh, uh, both taking targets away, and it it turned into Jordan Reed was, uh, he was he was Houdini'd. I mean, he he came through with a garbage time touchdown that I saw. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had a Foot Clan supporter message that the Jordan Reed touchdown kicked him out of the playoffs. Oh, Ouch. that stinks. Ouch. Yeah, that's a bad beat. Yeah, that's that stinks. Um I'm gonna bring I'm I'm hosting, so I get to bring him up and you guys All can right. shut him down if you want. I believe in the process at tight end position and I still believe in Jordan Akins for Houston. Jordan Akins led the tight end position in snaps for this team, which he's done basically since he's been healthy. He tied for the second most routes run at the position. It hasn't turned into production for Jordan Akins, but he's on the field running routes on a team that is devoid of pass catching options. I genuinely think that mm. this is the week that it comes true for Jordan Akins. And I, I, I think it would take a lot of fortitude to take a guy who has pretty much done nothing and in your fantasy playoffs put him in. With that statement outlaid, I will say this. You look at the matchup and you go, oh, the Chicago Bears, they're a good defense. They're actually the fourth worst. They're a tremendous in, matchup. A, as far as against tight end goes, uh, and I'm talking about when you're when you're adjusting for your opponent's average. They are th That's where you beat them is at tight end. So, it. I mean, I get it. I get what you're saying. I still don't know if I could actually pick him up and Let, play him, yeah, but and I, the matchup is there. Let me tell you why. When I look at the other options, you tell me, am I going to play Dalton Schultz? Okay. Cincinnati's a great matchup. Sure. They're a great matchup. Yeah. I could play Dalton Schultz. I would play Schultz. I could play uh, Anthony Ferkser. I could play Trey Burton. I could pick up Cole Komet. What, what do I want out of this waiver wire pickup for my fantasy playoffs? If I want five for 31, 
Dalton Schultz is your guy. I think he can get you that. But do I want a chance at two touchdowns at my tight end position? That's why I would rather play Jordan Akins, his athletic profile, the end zone targets, and the snaps and routes run. I'm looking to try to get myself 20 points from the tight end position. That's just how I play the waiver wire with the with the tight end. If that's not the answer for you, then you can go to somebody who, you know, Akins can also goose. Akins can also get you two for 10 like last week. So I don't want to double down. I just don't see a lot of great options. You can go Jordan Reed. Would you take Akins over Logan Thomas? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, no. Logan, right. Logan, Logan Thomas he's is in his the, own tier. Yes, the, okay. he's the clear waiver wire pickup. If he's out there, but, you know, he's rostered in 25% of ESPN leagues, 40% of Yahoo leagues. So he is still available in the majority. And if he's there, he's 100% the person that you need to pick up. And if you don't need a tight end, let's say you've got Travis Kelsey, go look at your opponent. See if he's desperate for a tight end and Logan Thomas is on the waiver wire yeah. and play keep away. Yeah, and, and the truth is, is on a waiver show, you probably don't have to compete for Jordan Akins. I mean, that's just the truth. After what happened last week, you're not really competing for him. I like the matchup for him better than uh, than others. Yeah, the only way that you're going to compete for Jordan Akins is if there's two people that just listened to what you said who are both trying to get him because otherwise nobody's trying to pick him. Yep. It's just Chicago's given up nine touchdowns to the tight end position this year, so that's why those numbers are so bad. But you guys – might like somebody else. So do you like Cole Komet more? Do you like Ferkser if uh if we see no Jonah? Yeah, not I, I don't I don't love any of them more. I, I think Ferkser has gotten it done enough. Jacksonville is a neutral matchup for tight ends. So I'm fine with Ferkser. I, I would throw Trey Burton out there as well as a guy you talk about who has the chance for touchdowns. You know, Trey Burton's had a couple of multi-touchdown games. They use him as a running back sometimes at the goal line. Are you dro are you dropping Austin Hooper after last week to no. pick up any of these guys? No. To the week before, not, they're, they're, they're samesies as these guys. What about Logan Thomas? I would rather have yes. Logan Thomas. I would rather have Logan Thomas. Yeah, I've been so disappointed by Hooper's involvement. There's oh, certainly. Two it's targets in three of the last four weeks. It's the appendix, man. Is it? It stole his magic. I doubt that. You know, Baker's fading back to pass, and he looks Hooper's way and goes, "Well, no, wait, he had surgery recently. I'm going to throw well, he, it to Donovan Peoples-Jones. He looks out, and he goes, who on this team has all their organs? Okay. He's he's an organist. Um, that sounds like someone who plays the organ. Yeah, it does. <laughs> or someone who's very organized. <laughs> someone who's very organized. I'm an organist. I organize everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's why Austin Hooper doesn't get targets. Yeah. He's, he's too – he's not tidy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have quarterbacks here in a minute for your streams uh, this week. Defense. Yeah. Let's look at some defensive options. We have three weeks to think about, right, when you make these pickups. You got to win this week, but if you could pick up a defense that has a nice setup moving into the future – so let's walk through some of the better matchups for this week and see what their next weeks look like as well. Uh, you have Washington's defense against Nick Mullins in San Francisco. Washington's been stepping up in a big way. Mm -hmm. And the inverse, you have San Francisco against Washington. That seems like, I don't know what the over-under is right now. I don't know if you have that, Brooks. I'm guessing it's in the 30s. I'm guessing it's like 36 and a half Whoa, or 37. That would be low. I'm going to guess that's where it's at. You can feel free to buzz in, Brooks, if you see an initial line. Uh, you have Seattle, who played well last week. Forty-three and a half is what. Oh, I'm is it seeing. really? Yeah, hmm. that I would I would guess low low forties. Giving them giving them a little more. I need to give them more credit. San Francisco still can move the football. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Kansas City against Miami and Tua. I mean, Tua represents an opportunity for all defenses right now. Yes, uh, the Carolina Panthers are coming off a bye week. I can't imagine that anyone in your league was like, "Yeah, I need to stash the Panthers through the bye week." And they will be taking on Denver and Drew Locke and company. So that's a, that's a fine matchup. I'll say this. Seattle has the Jets this week and then Washington next week. And they've been a lot better. They have. Yeah, I mean, they were a good I – mean, they were a double-digit defense this week. I know Jason yeah. played them. They maybe they lost to the Giants, but we're not playing wins and losses. We're playing defensive performance, and they, uh, they've still got it done. Yeah. We don't know if Daniel Jones is going to start. Doesn't change – the but I don't think I want Arizona. Oh, really? No, I don't think so. They've been awful. I mean, 
I'd be looking at Giants wide receivers trying to figure out who's going to take advantage of Arizona. But they're at the they're on the list too. Uh, anybody to add there, Jason? No, I think you covered it. Uh, week fifteen, if you want to pick up in advance, uh, Buffalo against Denver in week fifteen. We mentioned Seattle against Washington. Arizona could be facing Jalen Hurts or Carson Wentz or maybe both of them. Uh, and then some good week 16 matchups if you want to stock up on your bench because you're planning for that title game. Mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco gets to take on Arizona. They've been struggling on offense. You have Houston's defense against Cincinnati. I don't know if I want to play Houston's defense. You have Washington against Carolina. Washington's defensive line is unbelievable. They are, they're a really good team. I love watching it. They're an example of a team where it's like you build with your line and then somehow you're competitive in every game and nobody understands why. Mm -hmm. But that defensive front is incredible. Chicago's defense has Jacksonville. Chicago has been dropped in some leagues. Mm -hmm. They have Jacksonville in week 16 as well. Anything else to add there? Nope. Full stream ahead. All right. Full stream ahead time. Uh, there are two two names I want to throw out there. If they're out there, they have yes. great matchups again. I They should be obvious, and we're not going to claim them. But uh, Kirk Cousins and Ryan Tannehill have great matchups again this week, and if they're out there, they are entering must-start category. Uh, yeah, they're uh, 100%. I mean, they were our stream picks last week, so if you listened – and you picked them up, and you played them, be happy because you're going to play yeah, them again. You don't again. have to do this segment this this week. Yes, just keep rolling Tannehill, keep rolling Cousins. You're great. But I'm going to throw out a streamer in more ways than one. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. Phillip Rivers against Las Vegas. Look, P. River looks a little bit more enticing when the when the Raiders are willing to, uh, to jump in and when T.Y. is willing to take a dip. <laughs> All right? Just <laughs> the uh, – the Raiders yeah. just gave up a top 12 week to Sam Darnold. That's not something you want on your, your resume. Rivers is playing some good football. He is truly a steady stream, okay? He is mm -hmm. a steady stream. Mm -hmm. He has been in the QB1 on, right on the edge there for four straight weeks, but he's not in the top 10. He's just sitting at the back of the streaming area. So if you're in trouble, P. River, baby. Mm. You ready? Nope. Okay. I'm not. Now, everything you said makes sense. P. We River about or your Josh Allen? Oh, Josh Allen. I know. I, I know the answer to that question. I, I mean, on, honest to goodness, if it was Sam Darnold or, or P. River, I'm not. This is only. This is personal. This isn't fantasy football analysis. This is I will not roll in my playoffs with Phillip Rivers. Fool me once. Shame on you. Oh, did he hurt you in the past? He has hurt me deeply in the past. <laughs> okay. It was against you, Andy. Um, uh, it, the matchup is good. Uh, their their stud safety being gone is great. Um, I hope that it works for anyone that does it. All right, for my stream. Wait, you're not content with P River? Oh, I. We're would, not just going to leave it at P River. I would much rather be uh, skinny dipping in no, the P River no, than going no. with the scenario that oh. I, that I am about to lay out for our our friends and our family and the Foot Clan, but. <laughs> I legitimately believe that he can be played this week. Hopefully, look, streaming going with the streaming segment in week fourteen. It's tougher. I mean, it's it's part of the show. We want to give you options just in case things happen. Yeah. Mitchell Trubisky will be playing the Houston Texans. The Houston. Te speaking of P River, that just uh, was dripping. Dripping. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, we're just trying Houston to. Tech. Yeah, we're just going as many as many P jokes as we yeah, can get today. Yeah, that sounds right. Look, the Houston Texans. Uh, Houston Texans. It's a fine matchup for quarterbacks. Uh, we liked. Allen Robinson was highlighted as a player to target going into the fantasy playoffs because he was taking on the Houston Texans in in Week 14. Mitchell Trubisky is the guy that uh, the, the Texans have lost. Bradley Roby. They have since gotten a lot worse, so I think that Mitchell Trubisky is in want, play. I just want Jason to decide between P. River and Mitch Trubisky this week. <laughs> oh, that I mean, was not that perfect. <laughs> That's so perfect. Oh my goodness! I don't even think we can find a third option that does puts you wow up between against it. those two. Uh, I think we call those my guys, right? Uh, yeah, they're Mitch your guys. Those are like yeah. anti your guys. Yeah. Um, no, they're uh, honestly they're they're both good streams. I think they're. Um, they're better 
options than what's at the bottom of the barrel. Here are some names that are at the bottom of the barrel because last week it was Tannehill. We brought that up. He is a smash play. You do not it, don't look elsewhere if you were able to pick him up. I want to give a little bit of confidence to the the Breeze Taysom Hill um, situation. If Breeze is out there, which he looks like he's available in the majority of ESPN leagues right now. I would I would pick him up if I'm looking at a need. Either I've been playing Taysom Hill or I don't know which quarterback to stream. He's got the chance to be back, pick up him or Taysom Hill. And I and I also want to bring up Matthew Stafford. You guys yes. um, brought up uh, before the show that you guys believe he's going to have a, a, a big game. It's against the Packers. The Packers are going to score. Stafford's going to have to keep up. They opened up Stafford with the new coaching regime this last week. So hopefully you see more of that. Green Bay is obviously a good defense, but if – if a lot of points are scored, uh, you know, even even if it's garbage time, Stafford should be okay. Yeah, the, the reason I like Stafford, I mean, it, you can't guarantee that Stafford against the Packers is going to have a big game, but you're just looking at the opportunity. And uh, the interim coach is Coach Bevel. What we saw last year from Matt Stafford is they opened it up and he was going deep at an incredible rate. Matt Patricia, the party pooper, shut that down this year. And now Matt Patricia no longer has a job, and they immediately he slammed his axe on the table and said, "No they, passing." They immediately went back to last year's. It, it could maybe maybe it was just a one week special, but the fact that Bevel is the coach now, Bevel is the one who got the the team to open it up last year. Uh, Matt Stafford's going to take his shots. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in that game. But you're certainly right; they're going to be playing from behind Detroit's defense. Uh, not a good. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show today. A Darren Waller signed Raiders mini helmet. Oh, oh. A goo -goo -goo -goo. $83 for number 83 for that mini helmet. Darren Waller, the Waller is himself. One of uh, hundreds of daily auctions over at pristineauction.com. Be sure to use the registration code BALLERS and you get a $10 credit. Guys. We made it. Show 1000. Oh, oh yeah. Goodness, that's next. And we don't even know what it is. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, show 1000. Make sure you join us. Thank you for your support and for listening. And we will talk to you then. Get some rests. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.